This is Mongolian Mindset, and today we're going to be responding to a Heinrich Pope. Can you type Jay Saxton? Um, she's currently on type, and I've always wondered what her type, what's her type. Okay, so I tried to find her person out of the database, and she's not on there. Um, so that's perfect. We don't have to deal with the monkeys today. But you guys know every time Mongolian Mindset drops a video, we send somebody to the psychiatric ward. We are the red pill of typology. Okay, so... Um, we're going to use Linda Barron's metrics, uh, temperament and interaction styles, combined with cognitive functions, and we will figure out her type. Um, just letting you guys know, um, Dario Nardi just dropped um, a very comprehensive um, typology um, uh, <clears throat> um, videos. Uh, essentially, let me, let, me, let me just actually read it because I'm forgetting here. Um, he has almost 20, hour, 20 hours of videos, 160 lectures, and 150 downloads spread over four courses. Um, <clears throat> it's digital learning at your own pace from Dario Nardi at Udemy.com. Uh, we'll be doing a comprehensive uh, video on that later this week. Um, but he has four different types. Find your best fit type. That's one um, course. And then develop your personality is the second course. And coaching team leaders in change is the third course, and uh, neuroscience of personality is the fourth one. Um, whenever Dario Nardi makes something, it is a must must grab. Dario Nardi puts things in words that it's easily digestible, um, and it's not going over your head like some people do. Um, it's actually he he does a very wonderful job of, of what he does. Um, so. Definitely, if you are into the uh, MBTI space, um, check out that course. It's, and Dario Nardi always makes it cost effective. It, it's never really expensive. Um, so pick up the Udemy courses from him. Um, I've already started the first one, Psychological Best Fit Type. Just going through the videos and supporting Dario Nardi. Um, but yeah, um, pick that up. Take your MBI, MBTI knowledge to the next level. But uh Let's get into this. Um, so we still are doing free typing sessions. Um, we blew somebody away the other day. Um, he thought he was an ESTP. And uh, I guess he got typed by some other people um, as ESTP. And we typed to be NFP, 100%. Any any hero can't miss it. We shooting shots from the from, from the three-point line over here, maybe from half court. We don't, we don't miss when it comes to typing. Um, I do believe that we are the best on YouTube when it comes to typing. Uh, we run a very nice system. It's not just one person. It's multiple people. Um, so, yeah, and we're still doing the free typing sessions. We're going to be getting that onto calendar, calendar or calendar.com this week. So you guys can just click on the link and uh, set that up. But we will be doing away with that in the future because I do need to focus on individual types um, and getting some videos out on that. Um but um, another thing was the Mega Live for April was a huge success. We beat our uh, numbers. I'll be uploading that video later this week. Um, it was great. We had a wonderful talk. Um, <clears throat> there, some at one point we were in there talking about AI and sex robots. Kind of went off the deep end as soon as Christian showed up. But it, everyone got their time to shine. It was a wonderful uh, thing, and we'll be dropping the video on that. Um, and we do that once every month in our Facebook group. Um, all you have to do is join the group, and we just talk about the goals we accomplished that last month and the goals we're setting for the next month. And any kind of MBTI questions you have as well, you can kind of drop those. But it's all an uh, interactive type thing, and uh, we, we hope to have um, big names on there. Um, I know Joyce is going to be joining us next month, and Leon always joins us. Amazing. And Guitaro5000 is joining us next month as well. He has 800K uh, subscribers on YouTube, so that, that's going to be uh, great. Um, and we'll try to keep upgrading that and eventually have celebrities on there. So uh, go ahead and join us now while you can. We are like the Myrmidons, man. You see us coming, you better run. <clears throat> but let's... So these are the metrics we use here. Um, initiating versus responding. Um, do they initiate conversation? Do they change uh, the conversation are they gregarious um, or are they responding are they allowing things to come to them um, are they um, taking time to respond um, <clears throat> um, and then you got direct versus the foreman are they specific concise to the point 
Um, are they informed? Are they giving extra information allowing other people to make the choice? Um, are they taking a more passive role? Are they uh, descriptive, wordy, um, having trouble telling people what to do? Is a sign of informative, direct. People like to tell people what to do to a degree. <clears throat> Sometimes responding direct doesn't as much, but initiating direct, hell yeah. Uh, that's my superpower, telling somebody what to do. Um, abstract versus concrete, are they talking about the what ifs, what's possible, the contextual things, uh, things outside the five senses? Or are they talking about what's inside the five senses? Are they, are they talking about experiences? Or are they just talking about uh, what is? Are they, you know, are, do they even care about possibilities? Are they dry? That's going to be in the concrete. Then you got pragmatic versus affiliative. So pragmatic is basically a utilitarian mindset to a degree. And uh, affiliative is cooperation. Uh, so they're going to be like interdependent. They don't care about inclusion. They don't care about the group. Pragmatic people are, tend to be rebellious, contrarians, rebellious. Uh, I said that. Um, tend to break rules and then ask for forgiveness. While the affiliative people like to uh, ask for forgiveness, uh, ask for permission before um, they break a rule. So, yeah. Then you got systematic versus interest or motive. So uh, this weekend I was with my ESFP cousin. And holy shit, you wouldn't be surprised at how much he talks about people's motives. I was like, Jesus, bro, you are draining me with that shit. Um, <clears throat> but they're literally always talking about what other people like are doing or what other people get out of it or people acting weird or just just the motives behind people. Um, and then systematic people, they, they um, use systems to get more control of their life. Um, that's pretty much system structures. Um, and then you got outcome versus progression. Outcome is all about the end product progression is all about the journey um outcome i mean it's just going to be like a screeching stop every time they talk because it's going to be like an end product progression kind of flows like a wave like journeys it just flows because they're on the journey <clears throat> then you got tefi it's like te is organizing the outside world um it's going to be talking about outside sources um name dropping um books that type of thing more into that um, FI is all about what's important to them. TI is about a logical, consistent framework. If this, then that. FE is about understanding. Well, TIFE in itself, it's about understanding. Whether it's understanding people or understanding the logical framework here. Or diving deeper. And then you got SE. Um, and that's all about <clears throat> the environment. And then you have NI, which is all about the path forward. Um, they'll be talking about what will happen, et cetera, things like that. Uh, what's their desires? SE is all about what other people are doing, um, looping in people like that. Um, it talks from a third person perspective and not a first person. SI is going to be more by comfort, first person perspective, um, discipline, um, duty. Um, and then you got NE. NE is all about the possibilities, baby. Okay, so let's get into this. Sorry for taking so long. Without further ado, you're not up here to see me. You are up here to see the actress who's been in, I was reading her bio, like everything, literally. So I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to bring up Jade Sex into the stage. Give her a warm round of applause. Ooh, hi. All right. <laughs> hey, y'all. <laughs> okay, so what do you guys think her type is? And if you guys could, please subscribe. That helps us grow the channel. And that helps us continue to keep going. Happy Friday. Ooh, I gotta climb up here. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good. I'm enjoying uh, Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Were you here yesterday? I was here yesterday. Um, probably, maybe I got, I don't know. Y'all, some of y'all were here yesterday. Maybe I got a chance to see some of y'all. Uh, yeah, I was here all day yesterday. Are you here all weekend? Mm hmm yeah. Oh, dark. Okay. And now light. Really bright. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> we have uh, any other fun panels lined up for this weekend? Um, yes. <laughs> I don't remember what they're called. I know I have one at like 8.45 tonight. Oh, cool. I can't remember which one that is. And then I have another one tomorrow. Um, or no, I'm sorry, on Sunday as well. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I think mm. I was supposed to have you tomorrow for Women of Anime. Oh, yes. I'm on that one, too. See, I, I don't have the schedule in front of me. I double booked. Well, actually, triple booked. Okay, go back. Go back. We got some forgetfulness. We're going to have to tag her for SE. Um, <clears throat> yes. I don't remember what they're called. I know I have one at, like, 8.45 tonight. Oh, cool. I can't remember which one that is. And then I have another one tomorrow. Um... 
Or no, I'm sorry, on Sunday as well. Yeah. Oh, that's no. awesome. I think I was supposed to have you tomorrow for Women of Anime. Oh, yes. I'm on that one, too. See, I, I don't have the schedule in front of me. I double booked. Well, actually, triple booked with panels. I have uh, a, a comic book panel, your panel, and then the wrestling show kind of overlapping each other. Popular. So I'm, they took me out of the Women of Anime to kind of give me a little bit of time to get between them. So I am sorry. <laughs> I will not be with you tomorrow. I'm very sad about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so... Uh, you guys, you, you have questions, right? You know that, right? Come on up, <laughs> line up. If not, I'm gonna start asking the weirdest stuff. I'm pretty sure you guys want to know I more like about stuff. what she's done and her, yeah. her bodies of work. <laughs> I was actually reading. Uh, mm. Your name comes from your parents' name. Yes. Uh, so it's an acronym for Jimmy and David, and my mom's name is Jimmy, and my dad's name is David, and yeah, they were hippies <laughs> and made my name. And that's why everyone calls me Jad, because it has a weird, like, macron, has a macronized vowel, but All that's right. kind of... She's giving inf extra information there. That's informative. Who the actual side of it? Name comes from your parents' name. Jim. Yes, uh, so it's an acronym for Jimmy and David. And my mom's name is Jimmy, and my dad's name is David, and yeah, they were hippies <laughs> and made my name. And that's why everyone calls me Jad, because it has a weird... Okay, and now she's getting to the extra information. Weird, like, macron. It has a macronized vowel, but that's kind of... Sometimes people do that, some people don't. And, like, I, I stopped crediting that way, like, really early on, because the first couple times I saw the credits roll on uh, animes that I did, it said J question mark D. <laughs> so I was like, well, maybe I'll just be Jad. It's, it's all good. I'll explain it to everyone. But yeah, it's a it's a really unique name, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, and today's my mom's birthday. And today's my mom's birthday. She just initiated that. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to post a video for her, and I was trying to find her handle on Twitter, and I couldn't find it because I'm pretty sure she doesn't really. Do it. But anyways, <laughs> yeah. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. And thank you for coming. Uh, I actually wanted to ask a question about one of uh, the shows you did ADR on. Uh-huh. Uh, do you remember Silver Guardian? I do, yeah. Uh, what was that project like since it was a very weird show that was, <laughs> the rules were constantly changing and things were a little on the inconsistent side. What was it like ADRing mm -hmm. something that crazy? Um, so, for those of you who may not know what ADR is, is that I'm I'm also an ADR director as well as a voice actor, and Silver Guardian. I'm a director and voice actor. T E F I. Let's go. And was a project that I did about a year ago. Has anyone seen Silver Guardian? A few people, and it it's, has since then had a, a season two, which was uh, directed by uh, someone else, but. Um, it was a really interesting project. It was uh, originally adapted from a Chinese manhua, and so it had like a kind of different layers of uh, adaptation that took place. And it was also a uh, what we call broadcast dub, like one that comes out every week, and that we adapt and dub very quickly within like two to four weeks from uh, it coming out in Japan. And so it, I was always like, what's gonna happen next? Cause like I was trying to go online and like read these like fan translations of the Chinese uh, manga. And so <laughs> I never knew what was gonna happen. Um, so it was a little wacky cause it, like all the time was out of place and like uh, you couldn't tell where you were. All right, she's talking about the SI experience here. Woo, woo, I thought maybe we had uh, uh, SC user. I think this is an SI user. So, uh, she's informative. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and knock her for informative and initiating. So, with that being said, um, I, oh, me. Initiating. Change that to red. And I'll do that. And let's do that now. She's initiating. She's informative. So with that being said, we're looking at a get things going type of person here. So that's going to be the ESFJ, ESFP, 
ENTP and ENFP, okay? That's what we're looking at so far. She's looking like a TFI user and an SINE user. So I think we're going to be able to hit her quick for ENFP. But let's keep going. We're in the timeline. But I liked how wacky it was, and I really loved working with Kyle Phillips. I liked, I love, I love this, and I work with Kyle Phillips, TFI name drop, and love wasn't valuable to you. Come on. The lead in that show, as well as Amber Lee Connors. And John Swayze was really fun. I'd never worked with Name dropping some more. Him before. So it was really cool to get to work with those people. Yeah, thanks for asking about that. No, thank you. My friend and I could. Cool. That's our experience. Come on. Not just stop. Like you, we just, we had to know what was going to happen next. I know. I also had a really fun time. I played Wan Choi, the little kitty cat in that show. I had a really fun time. Come on. She's, this is us. Yes. Hello. Hi, hi. Hey, Jade. So, interesting question I have. So, how is it like working with Funimation? Like, I know they're, they're actually the largest anime studio, and now they're actually owned by Sony Pictures, one of the biggest uh, leaders in the film industry. So how was your experience working with Funimation? And especially since how Funimation, it, since anime and as well as the entertainment industry is is growing. So what do you see? And also b besides- That guy's informative. Despite your experiences as well, how do you see the an anime going, going towards the indus industry in the near future? Um, okay. <laughs> a lot to unpack there. Um, <laughs> I, Funimation for me... Even she's called me informative. ...he has just been a playground and also a place to grow. I mean, I started there 11 years ago uh, just as kind of a, like a kid voice actor. Not really a kid. I mean, I was like 24, but like I, <laughs> you know, very young and like, you know, learning how to do it all. And then, you know, getting more and more roles and like watching it go from... Progression. I hate her for progression here. That's a progression. Oh, she's on a journey. Well, but we already know she's initiating and informative, so that already makes her progression. So, a place to grow. I mean, I started there 11 years ago, uh, just as kind of a, like a kid voice actor. Not really a kid. I mean, I was like 24, but like I, <laughs> you know, very young and like, you know, learning how to do it all. And then you know, getting more and more roles and like watching it go from, you know, the DVD based like system where it took probably six months to a year to get what was out in Japan, out here and dubbed to the, to the fans here. And uh, now it's, you know, sometimes we have four week turnarounds, two week turnarounds, sometimes same day turnarounds, sometimes simul uh, releases. So that all of that in the past three years has been really exciting to be a part of. And because of that, there's been a lot more opportunity and a lot more growth for myself personally and, and becoming an ADR director uh, a part-time. And now I'm full-time directing two shows uh, every week. And um, so it's just been a lot of a lot of growth. And with the announcement of- A lot, a lot of growth, progression. Sony taking over. Um, I don't know, I'm really excited to see what happens with that. Um, She's full of TEFI. Right? So we're gonna go ahead and hit her for TEFI here. Okay, with that being said, we are down to two types now. Um, the two types would be ESFP. Versus ENFP, okay? Because they're the only TEFI get things going or start a type, okay? <sighs> You know, I just think it, it gives more possibility and more reach and more, you know. Talking about possibilities there, that's in E. Equity for what we can invest in. But, I mean, they're not really talking to me about any of those decisions. Yeah. <laughs> like, that is all way above <laughs> my head. But, I mean, it's it's pretty exciting to have such a huge, a huge, um, entertainment giant like be interested in anime and recognize the 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 reach and the kind of fan base that anime has grown is yeah, she talking about motives here or interest i think so 
uh, over the last 20 years in the United States um, and, you know, everywhere in the world, really. Uh, so it's kind of cool to see that. Um, hopefully that answers your questions. I'm not really yeah. sure, you know, what to expect for the future. I really hope that, yeah. you know, we continue to get more and more amazing content and more and more stuff that we can give to fans, uh, what they want, more... Talking uh, about giving them what they want, that's N-E, goddamn. We're already done here. E N F P. Oh no. So E N F E. Uh, 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 uh. So uh, we'll do a little bit more, but E N F P's are S I N E. E S F P's are S E and I. Okay. So with that being said, this is what E N F P is. Okay. Abstract and affiliative. Obviously, but yeah, we'll watch a little bit more to give y'all some tips. It's a good practice for me and y'all. I think we're ho hoping to have a kind of influence in in telling uh, some of the Japanese creators, like we want influence does motive more sequels to things. Like we want this show to come back, you know? Yeah. Like this is what we like, and uh, hopefully that happens. This is what we like. That's TF. Uh, I can say we like is F E. Nah, we'll say we like is F E. That's everyone, not just you. Yeah, thank you so much. Hi. Hi, hi. Okay, so what would do you feel it was your. When she was talking about what we want, we want, we want, that's kind of collective, so that could be any again. She's not talking about what she wants. Most difficult so character to voice as a voice actress, and why? Uh, the most. Vocally challenging uh, role that I've ever done was in a show called Toriko. Has anyone ever seen Toriko? Um, oh, thanks. <laughs> it's a show all about food, and it's really wacky. And I played a penguin named Yoon, and uh, it was just like all that he ever said was his own name to emote everything and say everything. And it was really high pitched and very squeaky and like very hard on my voice to be up like you know like really high like for long periods of time and like also his like little penguin spoiler alert his like penguin parents like died kind of violently and he's like crying like nonstop <laughs> and all of that so that was a really a vocally challenging role for me for sure yeah Thanks i would like point. to hit her for si there but i mean i'm let her slide because he did ask about that so yeah. appreciate it all right, uh, good morning, Jay. Good morning. Um, so one of my favorite roles of yours was um, your first major role as Masako Hara in Ghost Hunt. So what was your experience in getting your first major role? Um, I, prior to that, I had really only been like bit parts and tiny parts in uh, my very first show was called Sasami's Magical Girls Club. Mm -hmm. And then I also did some stuff in And then progression. Hell Girl. And um, so I had worked with Tyler Walker, who's the director of Hell Girl, and he called me in for an audition for that. And like, I just thought, this is just, you know, when you're auditioning early on, like usually it's just another opportunity to kind of like show up your skills and then maybe you'll get like a bit or something. And so when I found out I was going to be playing that role, I was honestly kind of like simultaneously very excited but very terrified. <laughs> so um, to kind of Terrified. take that on and get the opportunity to do that. But um, I always say like he mostly trained me in how to do anime and how to... Because a lot of the times, like, even if you're already a trained actor and, like, working in, in that field and have done a lot of that, it's just different when you're doing anime and when you're doing, um, and when you're dubbing something to learn how to do those, those different skills. So it was, it was a ride and it was intense and it was fun and I learned. It was intense. That's how I get it. It was a ride. That's a F5. So much from that, and um, it, that was a really cool show too. It was really cool to do like a a skip and F on everything, scary kind of story. And I was I was excited that she had she was kind of dynamic in a way, and that she had an opportunity to just kind of. Of course, be, you like being dynamic. You're any user. You don't want nothing static. Possessed by a uh, yes. a ghost one episode, and like yes. I got to show off. You know, a wackier side of me, which was really, really cool. I got to do this. I got to do that. Just ice more. 
which I think, honestly, down the line, because of that, led to uh, Harana and Is This a Zombie. <laughs> I really think Talk, that... She's talking about what it led to, not the N-E. I had a part in that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thanks so much. Down the road, uh, down the road. I was river. actually going to say that I think I, I've learned from light novels there's more to the story. And in the manga, like Dimension W, there's things they leave out, like the whole kid gets uh, wrecked by a car thing when the car fell on the kid. In the manga, that was like a whole plan of a bad guy that says, I'm going to reap the insurance. And I also want the... I know you can't... Uh, I also have an Is This a Zombie Volume 1 for you to sign when we get down there. Awesome. But uh, I was—I have a lot of questions, but so little time. Uh, was there any way? Also, Mira wanted bigger boobs in the manga. She said, "I wouldn't be—I wouldn't object to that." If, if that is that too PG thirteen, it was from the source. Uh, the other one was: Was there any lines that made you like laugh in the booth with this as a zombie because it was so wacky? Uh, I don't... What was the first question? I'm sorry. Uh, the, is this a zombie? Did you get any, like, like retakes? Because there were so many wacky, like, double entendres. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Especially any time that Austin Tyndall was recorded before me. I mean, <laughs> he's ridiculous in that show. And so, so funny. And I actually really like playing opposite of him. And uh, I've, I've had the opportunity to do that a couple other times. Um, one in... Gosh, I just forgot the name of it. I played a character named Guri in um, Love Tyrant, where I got to also play opposite Austin Tyndall. I, I really like playing comedy off of him. It's really, really funny. I really yeah. like... F -I. Uh, he was in some pretty weird, uncomfortable situations in Is This a Zombie, and uh, <gasps> I found that very funny. Yeah. <laughs> I, also, I also do roleplay for Kyoko on the one that stabbed him in the, in the yeah. Tumblr. She gets into a lot of not safe for work on my side. <laughs> she would though. I mean, she's kind of the bad girl, you know. Yeah. Does that make, is that weird? I'm not sure if Harna, you'd have to earn it like a dating sim. Could you imagine that dating sim of is this a zombie? <laughs> <laughs> no. Thank you. Her, you. Her, 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 her. That would be a fun fight, Konako versus Harna. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um. I just wanted to ask about, uh, since you uh, dub uh, Megami inside Food Wars, it's, uh, <laughs> is it like, how is it playing her role since she's like a character that started off as shy but had multiple breaking points? And do you think that she can grow farther than she is now? I definitely think she can grow a little more, for sure. Um, the more she comes into her own and the more they, you know, kind of explore some of her uh her backstory a little more and like where she comes from. Um, one of my favorite things about like trying to one of get my favorite things so so far. that role and like auditioning for that role was the direction that uh, the that Kyle gave me as the director, which was um, she loves name dropping. Just act like like the whole time, just act like you have to. You're about to pee your pants. <laughs> <laughs> like that is mega me. Yeah. Just, um, you gotta, yeah, you, you just gotta, you know, like the whole time, like pretend like you just really have to pee. Um, and that's Megami, me, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's been, it's been really fun. And I really, I'm really hoping that we get to do season three soon. That would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Hi. All right, we're done. All right. She's ENFP. Um, um, ENFPs are initiating the abstract, they're informed of their field of the interest slash motive, the progression, the TFI, the SINE. And with that said, the chart right there. Um, yeah, so this is fun. This is Mongolia Mindset, and we're out. Like, subscribe, please.